the Italians attack on the 3rd of August 1940. Italian Lieutenant General Nassi has three Italian battalions, 23 colonial battalions, four field howitzer batteries, a squadron of light tanks, half a company of medium tanks, some armoured cars and five bands of irregular colonial troops. And this force is split into three different columns. The centre column is led by Major General D. Simone, who is tasked with taking Hargeisa before advancing to Berbara. On his right, Brigadier General Bertello's eastern column of irregulars is to move to Odwina and join Simone if needed. And Lieutenant General Bertoli's left column is to take Zila, seal off French Somaliland, and then send parts of his force to the east to assist the others. Brigadier Chater, Royal Marine and Commanding Officer of the Somaliland Defence Force, is tasked with stopping the Italians. He has under his command the 1st Battalion North Rhodesia Regiment, 2nd Battalion King's African Rifles, 2nd Battalion the Black Watch, 1st East African Light Battery, which has four 3.7 inch howitzers who are from Kenya, two Punjab regiments and a lightly armed Camel Corps. So the Somalian Defence Force consists of four distinct racial groups without a central headquarters unit, has no transport and very little signals equipment. And yet Churchill demands that Wavell defend British Somaliland to the last. The Camel Corps, along with the Northern Rhodesian Regiment, holds Simone's centre column for two days, before, on August 5th, the Italians commit their light tanks to the battle. The Camel Corps and the North Rhodesia Regiment are forced to fall back, relinquishing control of the Hargeisa area. Despite being harassed by land, sea and air, Bertoldi's column takes Zila on the 5th and pushes eastwards. Botello occupies Edwina on the 6th before turning towards Adadal to potentially join the centre column once more. The British dig in at the Tug Argan Gap, which was essentially the last position the British could hold before Berbera without threat of being outflanked. After waiting for a couple of days, the advance of the centre column continues on the 8th with the Italian medium tanks making the first contact in the Tug Argan area. Despite an appalling lack of anti-tank weaponry, Wavell decides to fight and orders a general to take command of the Somalian Defence Force. Up to this point, Chater had been in charge of a division's worth of troops, but he had only just been promoted to brigadier. So on the 11th, Major General Goodwin Austin arrives and assumes command that evening. Earlier in the day, the 11th, the battle for Tug Argan begins. The hills in the area are manned by British machine gun positions and some barbed wire obstacles. However, the British have no anti-tank guns and no artillery to support their units. And the British units are too spread out to fully man the gaps between their positions. Italian artillery pound the Asa Hills, nicknamed Punjab Ridge because the 3rd of the 15th Punjab Regiment holds it. The Italians force the regiment off the ridge and resist a determined counterattack. But attacks on Mill Hill and Nobbly Hill are repulsed successfully by the British forces. On the 12th, the Italians attack all the British positions and Mill Hill is lost, with 1st East African Light Battery losing two of its precious howitzers. The Italians also secure themselves fully on the Assa Hills and are able to dominate the southern part of the gap by the 13th. On the 13th, Nobbly Hill suffers another attack, which is forced back by the British. Italian units also begin to move down the Mergo Pass, threatening to cut British supplies from the rear. On the 14th, Castle Hill and Observation Hill suffer from heavy bombing and shelling, but the British forces still managed to hold against yet another Italian attack. The British send in two companies of 2nd King African Rifles towards the Mergo Pass to stop the Italians from cutting off their one and only supply line. This fails and the British are pushed back. General Godwin Austin is now faced with a choice. He knows that he hasn't got the strength to keep his unit's supply route protected, let alone defeat the Italians. He could continue to hold and let the Italians wipe out his force in its entirety, or withdraw and possibly save about 70% of his force. He sends a request for orders on the 15th and receives a reply at noon. The order is to evacuate. Fighting a rearguard action of Barkasan on the 17th, against a slow Italian advance, the Black Watch resist the Italians effectively. So effectively that Godwin Austin can concentrate on and is able to speed up the British withdrawal. British forces are able to pull out of Somaliland fully by the morning of the 19th and the Italians march into Berbera that evening. 
260 casualties are sustained by the British, mainly borne by the North Rhodesian Regiment and the Camel Corps. They also lose some stores of equipment to the Italians, who badly need them. However, the main blow to the British is that of morale. Public opinion is shocked by the loss of British Somaliland, and Churchill flies into a rage. Wavell defends Godwin Austin, though, saying that he was right to evacuate under the circumstances. No one can deny that this was a great Italian victory. The Italians, however, lost 2,052 casualties and a loss of material they can't really afford in East Africa. Despite taking Berbera, they're still cut off from Italy and have no lines of communication back to their homeland. If only the Italian invasion of Egypt in September could defeat the British in North Africa, take Egypt, and then unite with Italian East Africa. If only Marshal Graziani could somehow succeed and not get defeated during Operation Compass. This video is the first Battlestorm Light video that I've made. Click on the links in the description and go and watch my main Battlestorm videos, which are of better quality than this. Videos like Operation Compass or Rommel's first battle in the North African Desert Campaign, as well as Operation Market God. Go on, you know you want to go and click on them. And if you like this video, please comment below, let me know. I may do more like this in the future. Thanks for watching, bye for now. The final camp group, the Fabius unit, which was actually named by the Italians, is formed from a motorcyclist unit supported by guns from the Areti division, and is sent towards Machili, followed by the rest of the Areti.